Welcome to Haltech NSP Elite Training Part 20. In this training module, we're going to be exploring how to work with our onboard data logging feature within our Elite systems using our NSP software. Without further wait, let's jump in so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our onboard data logger feature within our Haltech Elite systems using our NSP software. The onboard data logging is going to be really useful in two different ways. One, if we're in racing conditions and we can't have a laptop in the car, which isn't practical or safe, we're able to log the information rather than trying to use a PC logging option. We can log that data or information, specific channels at specific logging rates, to the onboard memory on our Haltech Elite. Now, that's going to be really useful because we can go and race for 20, 30 minutes, come back into the pits, and review how the car was performing on track. That's really invaluable information. Without having data capture, you have no idea either how the engine's performing or even the chassis in the vehicle just as a whole. So depending on how many things you're logging, maybe you have a lot of sensors, wheel tra uh, shock travel, um, you could have tire temperature, um, you could have all kinds of that information being logged in racing conditions, you'll get a really good idea for how the vehicle is performing not only with the engine but the chassis. So it's really important in a racing type of environment that we have our onboard data logging set up properly. We're going to look at how to do that here in this tutorial. The other reason why you might find the onboard data logging is beneficial to your tuning and calibrating process is looking at things, specific channels, and higher rates of speed than what we can get out of our laptop data logging. Now, our laptop data logging will be limited to about 20 hertz of logging speed when we're capturing all of those channels into our file. That's a really nice option because it'll allow you to calibrate and tune your engine for the most part about 90 95 percent of the channels at that logging rate will be fine to look at but if we want to take a look at something at really high speeds such as wheel speed sensors or not control when events happen very quickly we need a higher resolution when we're capturing the data so when we're using our onboard logging feature we can log at something like 200 hertz which is the max logging speed the hertz is how many times per second it's going to take snapshots and capture the data so normal laptop logging, 20 hertz, compared to the high speed logging at 200 hertz. If you're looking at the data and you're playing it back, you'll get a lot more resolution in the information as you're playing it back graphically that can allow you to spot trends and really allow you to see what's going on. So there's things you can miss if you're laptop data logging. So you may want to work with your onboard logger over your laptop logging if you're trying to deal with, again, high speed rate of events, looking at transient events, throttle tip in events, looking at knock control, looking at traction control, wheel speed, a lot of things you might want to go and work with this. So you can actually PC log and laptop data log at the same time. So that's another option. A lot of times if I'm on the chassis dyno and I'm doing tuning, I'll do my PC log and I'll onboard data log something like my knock control so that I'm able to see all those channels at higher rate, higher rate of speed so I really don't miss anything as I'm doing the tuning in case the knock control is kicking and doing something odd or I'm missing maybe some... Uh, raw knock data coming out of the knock sensor. I can really spot trends with that and allow me to be uh, more proper with my spark timing tuning. So there's various reasons you might want to work with the onboard logger. Whatever the case may be, let's take a look at how we can configure some things. I'm going to show you how to set that up and make sure everything's working properly and how to go and retrieve the data from your elite after you've came in from the pits or after you've made a dyno pool and you want to go and bring that data out from the onboard logging memory. All right, let's take a look at this real quick. So we're going to move over from our fuel tuning tab into our main tuning tab. From here, we're going to move into the navigation tree. And then we're going to move all the way to the bottom here. Let's collapse all of our separate sections. We're going to move to the very bottom under data log. Now here is where we set all of the parameters and conditions for the onboard logger to work. If we go ahead and expand this out here, we're going to find we have an option data logging switch that's not going to be active. Can't click on this. We haven't chosen that option here. But We'll get into what that means here in a second. So looking at our data log option, this is going to be not for the PC logging, but this is going to be for the onboard logging. If we look here at the top, there's an option to turn the onboard logger always on. Now that's not going to be ideal because there's a finite amount of space on the onboard logger and we'll find that we could easily fill the onboard logger up if we have it running consistently as soon as the, essentially as soon as the elite's powered, it'll be running the onboard log. We don't want to have that. So that's typically an option that we're going to go ahead and just leave off. The other option here is going to be data log switch input. We'll look at this here in just a few minutes. This allows you to have a toggle switch in your car to be able to turn the logger on and off. 
So this might be something you want to do. This is really popular in domestic drag racing or drag racing in general, where you put a switch at the back of the car, your crew chief will walk up to the toggle switch and toggle it on to initiate your data log when you either, before you enter the burnout or as you're staging the car. That isn't a necessity, but it is something nice to be able to be specific with being able to data log. This is also useful for a situation where let's say you're driving your car and you're noticing it's doing something weird. You don't have your laptop with you. You can simply click the switch allow it to capture the data and turn the switch off will then allow it to initiate that data log and so essentially start and stop it. So you can play it back without having a laptop around. You can be very specific with looking at that condition that you might be having a problem with. So this might be something you wanna go in and, and turn on and work with. I'm gonna leave it off right now. We will talk about this here in a little bit. There's a logger off delay and this is going to say, in this case, once it meets the conditions right here, once it meets this specific condition, in this case, it's going to be throttle position. If Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.